Income Tax 2022-2023. Moving Expenses, Deductible Part of Self-Employment Tax and Self-Employed SEP Simple and Qualified Plans. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2022 Instructions for Schedule 1 Additional Income and Adjustments to Income Adjustments to Income section you can find online at the IRS website irs.gov irs.gov Looking at the income tax formula we're focused on line 2 that being the adjustments to income remembering that the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement although a strange when we've got the income minus the equivalent of the expenses those being the deductions getting us down to the equivalent of net income that being taxable income the objective flipped on its head we want taxable income as low as possible in other words in in opposed to or as opposed to normally where we want net income as high as possible so we looked at the income line in prior sections. Now we're focusing in on the adjustments to income, which you can think of as kind of like an expense, kind of like an a deduction. Let's do deductions. You might hear it called above the line deduction, a schedule one deduction. And you might say, why does it say adjustment to income instead of a deduction? And you could think of it as a contra income account, but it's basically decreasing the income coming to a subtotal to get us down to the taxable income. The reason you might call it like a, like a contra income account adjustment to income is because that subtotal is called adjusted gross income. And that's an important subtotal because it allows us then to, to calculate the phase outs on deductions and credits, usually based on this number as opposed to the top line number, the uh, income number. Also, just remember the adjustments to income do not have that kind of threshold that we have to clear a standard deduction before they start to benefit as with the itemized deduction. So if we qualify for the adjustments to income, then we typically can take that adjustment, although they're somewhat more limited than the itemized deductions. Okay, so here's the schedule one. We're focused on the, we're focused here on the moving expenses, the deductible part of the self, uh, self-employment tax, and the self-employed SEP. So let's just give a quick recap of these and then we'll dive into the line by line instructions. So the moving expen expenses for members of the armed forces, you'd have to attach form uh, 3903. The main thing to remember here is there was a big like restriction in the type of moving expenses that can be deductible. You might have people asking you, well, I have to move, I have to move for my job. Don't I get a deduction for that? It used to be that you'd get more capacity for a deduction for moving expenses for normal people the justification being that allowing people to deduct their moving will make it easier for them to be to be more flexible and be able to to move from place to place uh as their jobs uh, are are needed which uh, is a decent justification but in any case they they removed that and restricted it severely so that now you have the moving expenses for members of the armed forces, which kind of simplifies the tax code. And it kind of makes sense that they kept the members of the armed forces because the armed forces often have these special kind of tax provisions because of their particular situation. And oftentimes the military moves and they might have to move suddenly, uh, suddenly. So, so it would make sense there. But even then, oftentimes the armed forces will reimburse them for the move. And if that's the case, then the, you may not be able to take the moving expenses as a deduction because you already got reimbursed for the moving. And that would be like a like a double dipping situation. And then you've got the deductible part of self-employment tax. So we talked a little bit about self-employment tax when we looked at the 
uh, Schedule C income. We'll talk more about it when we talk about Schedule C or business type of income uh, on a Schedule C in future presentations. It's kind of a complex scenario, but the general outline would be, uh, remember that if you're a W-2 employee, you're paying income tax and you're also paying Social Security and Medicare. Those are the, the, the payroll taxes and your employer is matching Social Security and Medicare and having to pay those as well. If you're a Schedule C uh, person, meaning you have a sole proprietorship, then you have to pay your income tax, but the IRS also wants to force you to pay the Social Security and Medicare, kind of like the payroll taxes, which they call the self-employment tax on, in essence, the net income of the Schedule C. Schedule C being the most common uh, kind of form that we would think of subject to self-employment tax and so so then you have to calculate that but you might say why would we we also get this half of it as a deduction or the deductible part of self-employment tax is typically half of the self-employment tax why would that be because they're trying to mirror a situation as if you were an employee of your own small business sole proprietorship because if it was a corporation then you would, would have withholdings as the employee, but the corporation would also have to uh, pay the payroll taxes uh, on their half of Social Security and Medicare, but they get a deduction as well for doing that. So they actually get a tax benefit of the deduction. So we should get a deduction if you're gonna treat me as a sole proprietorship as the employer and the employee of myself for Social Security and Medicare. So, but we can't take that deduction on the Schedule C because I needed to calculate the Schedule C to figure out what the net income was in order to calculate the tax in the first place. And that would create a loop reference. And therefore they have to put it over here on the adjustments to income. So it's a bit messy. We'll talk more about that later. Self-employment, SEP, simple and uh, qualified plans. So now these are gonna be those retirement kind of plans situations. So notice that if you're an, an employee, then you might, have the capacity to invest in like an IRA uh, or a 403b type of plan, which which is a great benefit because then it reduces your income because the oh, the idea of all these types of plans is that you're going to get a tax benefit typically when you put the money in, unless it's a Roth or something, but normally you get a tax benefit when you put the money in and you get to defer the tax that's going to be applied until the point in time that you take the money out, say in retirement, for example. So if you're working for somebody else, then they're gonna report that by reducing your income by the, the non-taxable amount, the amount that's been exempt from taxes on the W-2. So line one of the W-2 will be reduced for the amount that you put into say a 401k plan or a 403b, for example. Now, if you don't have any uh, capacity to put money into a 401k or 403b, then you often think of an IRA situation, which we'll talk about later. So in an IRA, uh, you can't deduct the, the amount from your W-2 because it wasn't your employer that facilitated the IRA. So therefore they have to put it in this above the line type of deduction in this kind of setting. And then you could have situations where you're self-employed and instead of just sitting with an IRA, you, you would like to do one or both of two things. I would like to put more money in than I can put in in a typical IRA and I have a sole proprietorship business like a Schedule C, number one. And number two, maybe I want to have a benefit to my employees like a 401k plan or something like that. Plan A, plan B. But those in plans are too complex to manage for me and therefore I want a kind of more simplified plan. And that's when you might put money into like a SEP a simple and qualified plans. So these kind of kind of plans are a benefit to people that have, once again, a Schedule C business, which we might talk about more when we get to the Schedule C stuff. Uh, and that would be that I'm self-employed, therefore I don't have any access to a 401k. The benefit of the 401k plan, if I was employed by someone else, is that the, the dollar amount you can put in is higher, a lot higher than like, like an IRA and you, you might have a matching kind of situation. So if I'm self-employed, how can I increase the amount that I can put in above the limit of an IRA? At least, can I do that? 
well, the, then you might be able to get like a SEP, a simple, or you can start your own 401k plan, but that's more, that's more cumbersome to do to manage it. And then you also might be able to benefit your employees by allowing them to put money into these types of plans, uh, as opposed to them being restricted by just being able to put an IRA deduction in place. Okay, that's the idea. So line 13, health savings account, the HSA deduction. You may be able to take this deduction if con contributions other than employer contributions, rollovers and qualified HSA fundings, distributions from an IRA were made uh, to your HSA for 2022. So we've got the health savings account. So for that, if you've got the health savings account set up, uh, you could dive into that with more detail with the form uh, 8889, line 14, the moving expenses. You can deduct moving expenses if you are a member of the armed forces on active duty and due to military order, you move because of a permanent change of station. Uh, you could use uh, tax topic 455 or C form 3903 for more detail. Line 15, deductible part of self-employment tax. So if you were self-employed and owes self-employment tax, fill in Schedule SE to figure the amount of your deduction. The deductible part of your self-employment tax is on line 13 of Schedule SE. So in other words, if you have a Schedule C, typically you have to have a, the bottom line of the Schedule C will be your net income. You're going to use that to calculate not only your income tax, but also your self-employment tax, Social Security, Medicare. And then half of that generally is the amount that might be an above the line deduction. So line 16, self-employed SEP, simple and qualified plans. If you were self-employed or a partner, you may be able to take this deduction, see publication uh, 560, or if you were a minister, publication 517. So if you're self if you're self-employed, sole proprietorship, then if you when you start generating money, if you have the cash flow, then you might be saying, hey, how can I put money away? Uh, for retirement and get more of a tax benefit than say simply putting money in to an IRA because that's a fairly low limit and you might then say 401k plans are more complex and then you try to compare some of these plans like a SEP and a simple and see what might best fit you uh, and uh, your business.